Hi again, and yet another book on the World War II Special Operations. And this book is devoted to one particular operation, a most significant and spectacular, spectacular operation carried out by SOE. Now, there's been several books about this operation in Norway, which uh, targeted the Norsk Hydro uh, at Vermor in the Telemark. Um, but the book that um, I'm reviewing is probably the most detailed uh, of, of them all. Now, um, the history of the resistance uh, in Norway is very, very interesting. Uh, th there was a very strong, very active resistance movement it, it um, had different um, branches to it, uh, but they uh, did carry out a lot of very, very um, significant operations within Norway. And there was a big presence back in the UK of Norwegians who had escaped and were training to go back. But then... Uh, an interesting fact was there was also a uh, part of the Norwegian uh, community who were sympathetic to the Nazis. And um, many of the occupied countries had um, people who joined the Nazi cause. And the Waffen-SS had divisions um, from many of the countries, from France, Belgium, the Netherlands, the Ukraine, Latvia and Norway, amongst others. And um, there was even cases of uh, one brother uh, in, would be in the Norwegian Waffen-SS division and another brother would be fighting for the resistance. So uh, families were split. Anyway, the very strong um, Norwegian... Um, element in exile in the UK, which was led by the king who, who had come over to, to the UK, um, was basically called the Company Linger, uh, led by Martin Linger. And they uh, were fed into SOE, uh, training for special ops back in Norway. And um, I was told uh, that there were people who joined Company Linger um, and they had rowed across the North Sea in an open rowboat. And because of this, they were told, you don't have to do any other selection process. You've proved your hardiness and your commitment, your dedication and um, your, your willingness to, to fight. So um, they had a big pool of, of guys. So the book details um, what what was the background to this whole operation, which was the nuclear research had gone on in uh, Norway. And um, remember back then, all the other stuff, uh, which we're very familiar with now, you know, some of our electricity comes from nuclear. Back then it was all magic. And uh, there was a lot of research done by um, prominent uh, uh, scientists uh, researching how, the, how uh, nuclear energy could be um, used. And Norway had this big facility up in the Telemark. And it was producing um, deuterium oxide or heavy water. So it was seen as uh, an invaluable part of the Nazi attempt to build uh, an atomic weapon. Uh, and it was. That's exactly what they were doing. So there were, there were several operations. And the first one was um, Grouse which was an advanced team of four Norwegians who were parachuted in to the Hardanger Vidar, which is a barren plateau in the middle of Norway. And they uh, basically uh, had to survive there. And they it was very, very hardy, very austere um, circumstances. And they ended up eating reindeer moss and all sorts of things. But th they were the guys on the ground. Then the next operation was freshman up, up freshman 
which was to send uh, commandos, uniformed commandos, who were the strike team, and they were towed by Halifax bombers uh, in gliders. But unfortunately, a mixture of the terrible weather and the terrain, the gliders crashed and the commandos were captured. Now, just as an aside, I remember I was on a team, a protection team at a, a VIP residence, and we were watching uh, in, in the uh, mess hall, we were watching uh, The Longest Day on TV. And one of the guys from SF who was watching it, uh, when the gliders were going in, he said, thank God we don't do that anymore. It's a very, very dangerous way to go to, to war. And the freshmen approved that. And the guys were rounded up, the ones who survived, uh, tortured terribly and murdered. And uh, I say murdered because they were in uniform. So then SOE sent in another six um, of the Norwegian guys from Company Linga, um, headed by Joachim Rorenberg. And I, I've got to apologise for my pronunciation of Norwegian names. I know that it's not accurate. And uh, this was called um, Gunnerside. They linked up with the Grouse guys uh, quite miraculously and um, made their way to the target. And they... There wasn't much of a viable approach, but the, the approach they decided was to go right down into a ravine to all this frozen terrain, up the other side of it, because the only other way was a, a bridge which was guarded, make their way in, do the task, and that, that was it. This is exactly what they did. They got in, <clears throat> set the charges to blow the big containers of the uh, heavy water. They even recovered the spectacles of one of the Norwegian workers because had they been broken, he, he wouldn't have been able to see for the duration because you couldn't get this stuff. Got him his spectacles. Um, they left signs that they had been inserted from the UK uh, as a as a exterior raid force rather than it was locals. Withdrew, charges went off, job was a good one. They uh, managed to uh, extract to um, through Lapland, uh, and most of them went to Sweden. Some stayed to continue sabotage operations in Norway. It's regarded as the textbook SF operation of, of, of World War II, and is still taught um, in, in the training of special force op officers to this day, because... Um, even, even the, the Nazis, uh, the commander Falkenhorst, he realised that it, it was an external commando operation um, and he didn't blame the locals. So, um, terrific. The, um, e even later, um, our, our, our chap Mr K, who... Uh, is a good friend of ours who is a member of the um, Norwegian Special Forces currently. He told us that they used to bring in the old uh, vets from the operation and they'd give them talks. Um, so there was that continuation um, to the next generation and so on. And um, they um, there's a, a museum in, in Oslo, I uh, put, put a couple of pictures from it. Uh, and when we visit, the first time we went to Oslo, we were taken to it. It was fantastic. Uh, it was a privilege to go there, the Museum of Norwegian Resistance. But what heartened me was there was a party of school kids going, going around and they were paying lots of attention. They had the notebooks out and they were wrapped in, in the history of, of their resistance, which was great to see. With the current generation um there was a movie made hollywood made a movie starring kirk douglas which is about as accurate as a hollywood movie starring kirk douglas is going to be about the war in, in other words not to um but there's been lots of documentaries reconstructions and so on there's a lot of it on youtube and um it really 
is something that um, we should remember. Um, the Norwegians can be very, very proud of. Uh, fantastic parts of their history, fantastic parts of SOE his history, really did help put SOE on the map uh, back, back in the, the British um, government. And um, the book, The Winter Fortress, is um, one of the better books on the subject. Uh, the operation is mentioned in many of the books on SOE, but I wanted to devote this to a particular book on it, and The Winter Fortress certainly does fit the bill.